so we just finished recording that little Facebook live video. How would you feel about that, Brett? I think it was good. I was kind of, I kept wanting to say, how many copies do you have? <laughs> but I knew you didn't want to, that question. You, I knew you wouldn't answer that question. We won't answer that question. We You're about the fifth guy don't. to ask that today already. So I just gonna, <laughs> exactly. I wanted to ask. And then I want, of course, I wanted the story about how you came across. You them. wanted to ask worse than the story. We just, I, I, how many and where'd you find them at and how'd you find them? And we're going to, it's a cool story, Brett. It's, it's, uh, oh, go ahead, buddy. I said, it's a, it's a, first of all, Jason gets some mad props for that. Like, at the point where Brett, the I, researcher. I hey. didn't fully, cause I was, I was like, oh, I don't really want to go pick these books up. I was like, Oh, this is gonna be a pain. And when I got there, it was like, I was telling Jason earlier today, I was like, man, it was really good for me to see that experience that to talk to Ed, his son. And, uh, and we're, you know, it was, and when I was driving home, I was like, wow, that was a really cool experience that, that uh, I didn't go into it realizing how cool that was, to be honest with you. So it was good for me to slow down and just see the value of what had just taken place. Wow. But I mean, his experience or? So, yeah, back it up, buddy. You, you picked these books up from who? Yeah, yeah. So Jason, who did you contact, Jason? So this is, Brett, this has been something that has been going at least a month, I don't know, weeks. Yeah, three, probably three, four weeks, give or take. I was doing a podcast. Clay was over here. I was doing a podcast with Clay, and we ran over to a guy's house, and we, we were recording. And I don't know if we're going to, like, we got to get permission to, to use it. But, anyways, after the, so I'm not going to say who it was, but after the podcast. So we're not doing the pod, we're not doing the podcast right now. We are doing the podcast right now, Brett. No, you're live. I got you again. <laughs> you, you These guys are being sneaky again. <laughs> you you asked the question. We told you. We're like, we're not going to answer that question, Brett. Uh, funny. Okay. I was like, damn, I just told you we weren't going to answer that question. And the first thing we hit record, I want to know how many. <laughs> like, damn it, Brett. Damn it. You can't do one nothing job. nice. One. <laughs> Okay, um, I won't. I won't ask. I won't ask that question again. <laughs> You're done. You're done. No more questions for Brett. <laughs> One per hour, isn't that Colby's rule? <laughs> yeah, that is how we know Brett is an authentic hound guy. You can tell him over and over again. And the first thing he's gonna do is ask the question. We're like, we're not gonna say how many we got because we don't want. Um, we just we we wanna we wanna make sure they go out to the right people. So that's part of the story. Gotcha. But anyways. Gotcha. Uh, we're doing me and me and Clay did this podcast with this with this guy. He's my friend, but um, and and after the podcast, he goes, he, you know, Clay was re really interested in me. and so I hope we can get that podcast uh, out. We, we got to wait for some uh, permission or whatever, and, and if it comes or not at all. Anyways, he goes, you want to see this really cool book? And he goes over to and grabs the Brave book, and he's like, I mean, just just show me the book, and and I'm thinking, yeah, yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> I've heard Jason, of it before. Jason's working on something. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, so so anyways, so that's it it's been a process. And uh Jason, how did you even start this process? Well, now I wish I could think back and like really romanticize it a little bit, but P pull your clay. Yeah, right. Channel it. <laughs> like channel it, man. Channel clay right now when you're telling the story, Jason. <laughs> no, it was um I don't know. I've always just been the guy to pick up the phone or, or shoot an email or whatever. So I, I took a chance and I, I found somebody who I thought was connected to Steve somehow. And I didn't know how, I mean, it was, it was ended up being his granddaughter that I got in contact with Holly and um, you know, she, it was a hyphenated name. So I'm like, okay, I don't even know if she's like really related to Steve, you know, and I kind of did some research and it went back and forth for a couple of weeks. And I was finally able to get a hold of her and I called her on the phone and I'll tell you, you want to talk about cold starts, cold call. It was one oh, of those, wow. it was one of those like pick up the phone and say, Hey, my name's Jason Doobie. And this is going to be a very awkward phone call probably, but are you related to Steven Mathis? Okay. And stop right there, Jason. Cause I'm going to fast forward now, Brett. Okay. I'm going to, cause I got to visit. <laughs> You got you're gonna have a hard time following us on this podcast, but I'm gonna <laughs> so fast forward to me sitting in 
the storage unit with 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 Steve's granddaughter, and, and so, we were waiting for uh, for Ed, his son, to show up, and uh, and uh, she we were just, we were just ch- talking, and and uh, one of the one of the conversations, you know, as we as we started to get the feel for each other, you know, what I mean, like in a relationship, you build trust, right? So so we were we great family. I mean, you can just tell that is a good family. They don't hunt, people. you know, the granddaughters. Yeah, no, they not hunters, you know, that didn't come down the, the tree. Mm-hmm. Um, but good people. And, uh, anyways, they were, they were telling me, they said, yeah, grandpa, cause they call him grandpa. I mean, it's to us, it's like Steve <laughs> Mathis, but it was like, yeah, grandpa. Yeah. They said, uh, you know, he always kind of liked the ladies and, uh, I'm probably talking too much for them already. Uh, <laughs> don't talk to buddy. I'm an open book, right? I'm right, too transparency. Yeah. Transparent. And, uh, and so we've always joked in the family that we were going to get this call from some person that was like, oh. <laughs> and so now we're going to back up and here's Jason. This is making the call. Yeah, he's yep. making the call. This is an awkward, this awkward thing I'm going to talk to you about. And then her mind's going, here it is. This is, this is the call yeah, we've been waiting guy. for. It's the other family. <laughs> yeah. But no, she was, she was great. You know, I said, Hey, you know, I just thought I'd reach out. Your grandfather wrote a book, you know, I have a copy here and we were wondering if there were any more. I mean, it was like, you know, yeah. dumb question, but every once in a while, a blind squirrel finds a nut, I guess, because <laughs> actually, yes, we do. And like, it all started from there. And it took, how many weeks did it take? At least two to three weeks just to make it work with her. I mean, cause we were yeah. the big thing, honestly that, you know, and, and they didn't trust you know, like the one thing they didn't know us, you know what I mean? No, like, yeah. you know, this is part of the you know, story. She told me, she goes, man, we didn't. And they looked us up and looked at, you know what I mean? I was like, man, these guys, they did the we research. Fooled, we fooled her. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. She looked at it and was like, man, you know, cause we, we do what we say. And, and, and they really wanted, you know, this is their grandpa. That's a really cool story for them to hear about the stories and uh, kind of had to figure out, a, a, you know, how to make it work. We weren't going to flip these books and try to, you know, make unsane, you know, $500 Amazon costs yeah. on them, you know, but just get them out there. So people have oh, access to them. What, I mean, I've had, like I said, I've had lots of people ask me, you know, if I knew where they could get a copy of Brave, you know, and then, of course, I told you the story about the copy that I had that I read of Mike Roots. I mean, I got it and it, it's it, it, it's a it's paperback and but it was all the pages were all falling out of it. He had a rubber band around it and he said, sure, you can take it and read it. So I took it and read it, you know, and I went back to take it back to his house and and uh, he was out somewhere and I called him. He said, uh, he said, yeah, just. That old Ford truck there, just throw it on the seat of that truck. And I said, Mike, I said, do you know how valuable this book is? And he said, well, oh, no, not really. You know, he, he don't keep up with nothing like that. And I said, yeah, yeah. these things are worth like 400 bucks or something. Oh, well, hold on. I'll be up there in just a minute. He's in. <laughs> he came up there and he took it from me and took it in the house. I mean, <laughs> can, can you put it in the glove box? You know what I mean? Let's, let's just not leave it on the front seat. Let's put yeah. it in the glove box. <laughs> well, this is, but, it's a big I mean, I don't want to like make this sound like we're blowing it way out of proportion. Like this is a huge deal. If anything with Holly, you know, Steve's granddaughter, when I told her like, there are people out there looking for this, they were blown away. I mean, they could not believe I told her I paid 400, you know, I think it was over 400 for mine years ago. And she says, my grandfather would have given you one. I, I, you know, But they had no too one. late, Jason. You just called a little too late. Way earlier. But it's like that whole it, it's easy for what we do to live and die with us if we don't have, you know, that that common drive to keep this going. It and is, you know, yeah. it, it shows in this family, like, yes, it was grandpa to them. But when I told them how you know valuable a content that was and we wanted to get it out in the hands of people, I mean, she was genuinely happy wouldn't you say buddy you yeah, got to meet yeah. her i f- i wish i would have she yeah. was happy to get them in the in in the right hands she did not want to sell them for amazon prices you, yeah, like that no. was a huge deal if we would have told her we were just going to sell them for whatever we wanted you know five six hundred bucks a piece i i don't think that they ever would have no. went anywhere they probably would have just got and lost. they and she didn't want you know she's she's got kids and 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 family like uh 
one of the things we'll talk a little bit about, which is kind of like we'll navigate it when we get there. Like, uh, is you know Ed, his son, has some dementia, and so you know, I mean, there was there was fight family dynamics of of the health, you know, as as sure as they're getting further from grandpa, you know, that's just the story of all of our lives. Right. And so, yeah. um, she's just busy. And so it was like, she, they didn't, they had no desire to try to sell these books individually or anything like that. You know, they, they, they didn't want to mess with them, you know, but they wanted them out there. And so it was just a really good opportunity. Yeah. That's, that's something and that, you know, just goes to show you that a lot of this, the hound hunting and the hunting is not, it's not always generational. I mean, it's not like it didn't continue on with his right. family it stopped right there and then all those valuable books stopped right there with him i mean it and every now yeah. and then, the, then <laughs> we're such a small niche really that it's yeah these things have literally been in climate controlled storage for over 30 years yeah that's that's a when, when were they printed 1980 88 88 i think yeah yeah, eighty-eight is when you they, got you got some in front of you. Take a look. A, a date on one of them boxes. What's the date? I think it's eighty-eight. I can tell you. Cut that tag off right there, so Jason. Whoa, can whoa, see. whoa! Who you handed that knife to first? That's hold a, on, hold on. It's good. It's good. Mike's got his own knife. Why am I giving him a knife? But, yeah, right. He's got two. So one thing, Brett. The paper that they packed this with. <laughs> 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 the paper. Can I see that? I, we should have done this on the Facebook live video. Right? I don't know if you can see this. We'll see if you can see this here. This is the paper. You'll have to see. Explain what you're seeing here. Oh, the, <laughs> that's one of those old uh, cassette players. A Sony. You got it upside down. Sony Walkman. Oh, wow. A that Sony was, that, Walkman. That's that's 80s, isn't it? Yeah, right. Oh, man. It's like personal training systems. That's right. Now through December 31st, personal training systems will include a Sony Walkman when you order four of our self-paced tutorials, man. It's just like <laughs> straight out of the sell, We should sell the wrapping paper. Yeah. Frame that and put it on the eBay, man. It's a time, it's a, a time capsule. The man right there. The ad, you can't, you can't see it, but that's the, that's the, the label. And so it's really cool. Carlotta, California is, is where these were shipped to from the binder from press. These things have not seen. Some of them have not ever been opened, the case. No. And and Jason, you just looked up Mathis. I mean, how did you find the name? <laughs> well, I can't give away all the <laughs> secrets here, but we'll put it this way. It was kind of like show. Uh, you were going to get your own shovel, Brett? <laughs> I'm going to start looking for stuff. At seven degrees of bacon. You know, it. somebody knows somebody knows somebody, and you get a link here and a contact here. I mean, trust me, I was blue ticking that thing, man. It was slow going for a little while. But you know that that's real similar to how I found Charlie Settles. Really? Who, yeah, that hunted with uh, Dale Lee down in Mexico. Uh, when I went and talked to Dennis Carson, he talked about Charlie Settles, and I looked it up. I started uh, with the newspaper. I have a subscription to a newspaper clipping uh, website or whatever. You can search names, and I searched Dale Lee, searched Charlie Settles, and it came up. But the, the spelling was wrong. I, they spelt settles wrong. I can't remember how, what it was. So I got online. I got to look in and, and it said Dover, Tennessee was where Charlie Settles was from. Really? So I looked up a Charlie Settles in Dover, Tennessee. And I'll be danged if one didn't pop up. Mm -hmm. So I got the phone number and I called him and I said, is this a, a Mr. Charlie Settles? And she said, yes, this is a <laughs> Charlie Settles house. And I said, you know, if he hunted down in Mexico with Dale Lee and she said, no, he's never hunted before. I said, no kidding. And she said, yeah, but we have another Charlie Settles right here in, in Dover, Tennessee. And we always get his phone calls. And, and I said, cause I didn't have the other number. I said, do you by any chance have this number? And she said, yeah. And she gave it to me. And I called him up and, and it was him. No <laughs> kidding. But just a cold call also, you know, just, Sitting there, you know, one afternoon, the weather was bad outside. I was just killing time and trying to figure out if I could, I could, you know, find him or find somebody who was down there along with them to kind of clear up the story. But Man. truth be told, I was watching Judge Judy and I figured I better do something to justify the job. So <laughs> you don't have, you know what happens when somebody calls me? It was like, <laughs> is, is, 
is this buddy with me? I'm like, click. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <I'm> like, uh oh. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm glad nobody's the only whatever. If I'm a famous guy later and somebody call cold calls me, I'm like, Bill Player, <laughs> hang up. Right. Yeah, no. Luckily, those guys, you know, they must pay their bills. I don't know. It was just really, <laughs> it was cool to hook up with this family because they really are like they were happy about it. I was getting messages the whole time, buddy's loading these things. Like, I'm getting a picture from him. I'm getting one from her. Like, here's a Jaguar skull. I mean, oh. what was that? Fill us in, wow. buddy. Jaguar. So, so, so I show up, I, I, I get there and, and, and I don't, I'm not even going to get estimate the age of, of Holly. I, I don't know. So, but, good you choice. Know, yeah. You, know, you get in trouble. Yeah. Really nice this. person. I mean, really genuine, salt of the earth. Awesome. I, I'm imagining. They're probably going to listen to this podcast. So we're going to be really nice, right? We make sure. Yeah. But, but no, I, I mean, excellent, you know, human beings is, is, is the best I can describe it. Just the, when they use the words like grandpa, it's just that's when it really started setting in that it's like, man, this is. I know what you mean. Yeah. So cool. You know, they have no idea. And so anyways, we're loading up a couple of these boxes and we're waiting for um, Ed Mathis, which is, which is uh, Steve's son. And Ed was a dentist, like really smart guy. He's like, you know, that wow. I'm limited in what I, you know what I mean? But I'm just trying to remember everything. But dentist, I mean, smart, sharp, is a, is a whip guy. He has like three books yeah. too. Yeah, he's he's written his own books and stuff. Mm-hmm. And so, um, but one of the things that they were concerned about was um, he's he's getting older and so he had dementia. And so they were really like trying to preface that, you know, it could be, an issue, you know what I mean? And so, and I was just like, hey, I, I lost my, my, my father a couple of years ago to cancer. I mean, I understand that, you know what I mean? I was like, you know, number one, no judgment. Number two, we're, we're, we're here to do the right thing. I mean, I don't care if, if it means no books, then that's what it means. I mean, you know, my integrity is much more for, for me, mm-hmm. you know, so I just wanted them to know that like, we're not here to take advantage of any situation. You know what I mean? Like we really want to make sure that that was important. So Anyway, so I'm, I'm loading book and they're like, yeah, there's a box with Mark Skulls on on the box. And so I'm walking <laughs> just, by this box. <laughs> you know what I mean? Every time I walk by this box, I'm looking at it like, mm. you know, just antsy, and I'm like, um, I didn't really know these you, people that well. Yeah, I don't know them that well. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, man, I, I, I mean, I don't know. It just that box just like it was like glowing. <laughs> you know yeah, what right? I mean? It's like, like the like, movies. And I was like, I have to look in that box. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm thinking bolt cutters. Cha- Maybe I should just ask. And so I, so I'm just like, would you mind? What, could I look at the inside that box and look at those skulls? You know, because I didn't, I didn't, I did not expect. I, I didn't expect, you know, a, a jaguar. I, I really didn't. I, I, so I pull out the first one, and it's, it's, it's a bear. You know, and I'm like, you know, and these again, they're not hunters, so they had no clue. Almost to the point where she's a little grossed out about the fact that there's a box of skulls. Like, she, I don't know if she was worried there was going to be human skulls. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, it was just like, she just didn't want to look into it. But I pulled it out and I was like, oh, that, that's a bear, you know? And I, I set it aside and then I pull out a, a cougar skull. I pull out a cougar skull and I, and then the next one I pull out is just a behemoth. And I'm like, he thinks massive. This is either the biggest cougar I've ever seen. Like, I'm like, a huge and i you see you've seen the picture right it's sitting on that that book and that book's oh it's ma- amazing how big their teeth are it, it is right meaty insane and i brett i'm not a picture guy very often no he's I, not <laughs> do you know why i put that skull on that book to show the size i mean just yeah to measure it to me yeah. i mean it was like it was the best promotion I ever did, but I had no desire that I didn't put it on there to be like, Hey, this is a leopard. You know what I mean? I was like, this is a leopard skull on a right. case of rave books. I was like, at the time it was just like, I, it was a picture of the skull. Yeah. Yeah. So I set it on that, that picture. And cause I was like, man, I gotta, I want to figure out what that is. You know what I mean? I was like, I, I told her, I said, I think this is a leopard. I, I, I don't know, but those teeth are massive. I mean, just, just yeah, huge. I mean, huge. I put my finger next to it, and it's just huge. And so, that was the whole reason for that picture. It had nothing to do with the Facebook promotion that you know, just wanted. To. On the drive home, I'm I'm in my mind. I'm like, oh, I got I got a cool picture. We can use that. Yeah, it was a good one. Um, maybe maybe you missed your calling. 
Oh, maybe. I, I, I told you, accidental <laughs> sometimes, man. Uh, I mess up. Dennis it's Carson like, had a had a had a jaguar skull, and yeah. that I got to see, and I was it was just I got pictures of it somewhere. I put it on Facebook, and uh, there's no telling where it's at. That's the problem with Facebook. It just you know it's there and then it's gone. You know it rolls yeah. the the, the, t- the way it rolls on. And I've got a guy that's building a website for me right now. I want to put a lot of that stuff on there. That you know I put I, I share all those newspaper clippings. It to me they just they fascinate me you know, to, to read how they talked about like the Lee brothers back in the, you know, the fifties and sixties and how popular they were. They, you know, actually wrote stories in the newspaper about their hunts and stuff. And now the only time you read about hunters in the newspapers when they're throwing them in jail. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the only, the only time they write about your, I never thought about it like that, Brett. <laughs> well, <true. laughs> but they were, you know, they were, it was popular thing to do, you know, and, so since you've seen both of them, a, a jaguar and a lion, I mean, most people are never going to see that. First of all, we're talking sizable size difference, though, aren't we? Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. let's say 170, 180 pound Tom yeah. does not even come close to a jaguar in my eyes. See if I do this without falling down. So I figure that book, if I looked at the picture and I had a couple other pictures from different angles, um, I figured the book was nine and a half inches long by 7.5 inches wide. And it's, it's larger than the book almost by an inch, inch and a half wide and maybe an inch long. And so I figured that skull was an 18 to 19 inches is just a estimate. You know, I didn't have calipers or anything. Yeah. And so on my way home, I, I, I sent the, the pick to, to Susie, Phil Susie. And I was like, Hey Phil, what do you think this is? You know, I didn't give him any measurements or whatever. I just was, you know, kind of blind, you know, but mm-hmm. question mark, you know, pictures and question mark. And so um, he didn't answer. So I had to call him. And of course my pictures didn't go through. So I, I resent him and he said, uh, measure it. You know, I'm like, well, I can't, I, I didn't take it. You know, I didn't, I didn't get the skull. So I was like, got home. I measured. I said, I think that's, you know, 18, 19 inches. And he says, definitely a, 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 a leopard or a jaguar. Sorry, not leopard. A jaguar, jaguar, not, not leopard. I probably said leopard earlier too. You but, said it. Yeah. But, um, we knew what jaguar were about. <laughs> yeah yeah it was and uh so that was that was way cool like to pull that out like i was looking at a box the first day i was like it's just a box that said skulls and there was some other skulls there you know there's a badger in there i think it was like as the skulls got littler i got less interested <laughs> you know what i mean like yeah get the bear Hard to up a jaguar get the cougar <laughs> I think I pulled out maybe a possum or a raccoon. You know what I mean? I'm like, but I kept looking at that as I'm, as I'm unwrapping skulls. I'm looking at that Jaguar skull. You know what I mean? I can't take my eyes off that one. And I was like, you know what? I don't really care. Anything this small, you know, getting the size yeah. of a, a baseball. I was like, well, I found out I, I was mean, just unwrapping skulls without looking at them. I'm looking at the Jaguars unwrapping other stuff. I'm like, I probably should stop. <laughs> I know you can't see that on the podcast, but that's a, this one is a Tom lion. This is a female lion, both yeah. mature. You can see yeah. the difference just between the, oh, yeah. the Tom and the, and, and the female. And I wish I could, I could send this to you, but I know it doesn't do any good on the podcast because, but I got this picture of this, uh, this Jaguar skull. See yeah. It's, it, it's impressive. I mean, it is really, and, and so Phil was saying and those teeth that. are just so big around. Exactly. It's That's like a saber tooth cat. Said. Like it is. they're structurally different and it's, yeah. it's insane. And longer, like when you first looked at it, you're like, mm-hmm. "Oh, the skull's longer." I mean, it's just, it's just. Big. I don't even. I'm not even sure how legal it is to have one. I imagine <laughs> this one is. Uh, uh, I'm checking. I had Phil kind of even for the family, you know, just to help them out with some information. Um, it's pre-ban, you know, so it's probably before the ban, so it is legal. But, um, the transferring and th- there's some. Some things I, I told him, I said, don't throw it away. You know what I mean? Like, I, oh. I'd like to figure out how to, to even for a museum or whatever, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. to, again, I, I didn't want to do something illegal and be like, I'll give you a hundred bucks for, you know what I mean? Trade, trade drag wire skulls and be like, well, you broke yeah. the law. It might not. It oh, might, buddy. It might be legal to. Oh, I was going to say, I just got your picture, Brett. That thing is meaty. That's, that's crazy. Might be, might be legal to own one as long as it was pre banned. But it yeah. might be illegal to 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 uh, transfer sell or sell. Yeah. 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 So exactly. I don't know. Well, well I, like I said, it, it it's theirs, and and that's something that may get past. 
whatever. I just told him, I said, if you ever get to, you, she didn't really care for the box labeled skull. So I was like, just don't do me a favor and don't, don't just dump kick them. those in the dumpster. You know what I mean? I was like, just don't let me, yeah. let me know if you, 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 <coughs> you guys don't want them. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know where they'll go. I'm not saying that I can take them because I don't even know the legalities of it, but I said, I would like to find out what is, is okay for that. If, if, if so, it's okay for them to have them, but I don't know how they transfer it. So we'll do some digging. I don't know. Anyways. Yeah. That was a really cool thing. Like, like, and there was other stuff in this, this little storage unit, Brett. And a lot of mem- stuff from Steve Mathis, memorabilia. Yeah. Yeah. And lots of pictures. pictures. Yeah. You know, that, that softback book that you had, they had the mm-hmm. actual original photo that they, they used to make the softback. The, the cover photo, yeah. Yeah, the cover photo. Um, there are some other photos that I snapped. We'll have to try to figure out how to get those those on there. I'll have to send you, you know, some of those pictures. Are the I've got a little portable scanner that I've been carrying around with me for these guys. That's a, I forget what, what it's called or what the name is, but it's just a little, it's probably, you know, just a little scanner, just and you put the pictures through there and it, and it scans them really nice. Oh, well. Yeah, we'll have to get you... Uh, some of this stuff so you can do a video or something, you know what I mean? So just something on that. You said you had some, um, what do you do? The papers for the dogs, the things I don't. Oh yeah. The pedigrees. Pedigree, pedigree papers yeah. for the dogs. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you just, you can tell that's a hell. Some of us don't care about them, but. They don't know. When they get this cool. It's like, man. Those yeah. things that you keep track of their, you know, how they were bred. Oh, I, I've learned. Yeah. This is, this, this is written to the American Kennel Club. Uh, New York, December 6th, 1978. Oh, wow. And he says, Dear sirs, back in 1955, I wrote to you in regards to the registration of a breed of trail hounds I had developed for the purpose of hunting mountain lion. At that time, after going over my breeding records that I submitted to you, along with a letter, you indicated that there was no reason why they could not be registered as a breed and, and suggested that I drew up a standard, i.e. color, size, Etc. But because I felt that such a standard might hamper the development of the breed of dogs that were geared to performance rather than appearance, I registered them with the American Registry of Purebred Animals, oh. Fish and Fowl, hmm. a registry where so much standards were required, only a complete and accurate pedigree. And it goes on. He explains wow. about it. And, and then what's, what's, what's nice or what's neat about the pedigree he tells he tells where the dogs came from i mean yeah that is it's just so cool like to walk back into that and be there and so i i hope that maybe sometime we can go in there and, and and poke around a little more you know they had some full cry magazines and just some some stuff that may or may not it may, it may not be anything you know i don't know but oh i, I but i think I really think that, you know, it should be copied or whatever, you know, so it can be preserved. Yeah. You know, for future, future generations. So we'll talk, we're going to try to talk at some point, maybe you'll see if she's interested in, and just kind of going through and just documenting and and seeing some of that old stuff and being, being honest with them. You know what I mean? Some stuff is stays in the family. I mean, it's just the way it is. Oh yeah. Even if it was just, if, if you just, uh, copied what you could, and and took pictures of other things and and because yeah. uh, i mean most everything that you got to be able to put it digitize it and put it on the web anyway i mean mm-hmm. that's where that's where the most people have can have access to it you want to know another benefit uh, from it little funny funny uh jason again was like you're not gonna talk about this and i'm like sure i am <laughs> <laughs> is uh, oh. apparently um Oh, Vera Mathis used to do a lot of the signing for the books. And, and so some books oh. are signed by Vera, uh, not, not Steve. It's Steve's name. And, but and so she was Vera. able to open that book up. I was there. And, and so they had a box that was like for family only. And it said, Steve <laughs> signed. <laughs> right. And so, <laughs> so those were the books that were like, no, no, grandpa signed these ones. <laughs> These are the really ones that really yeah. signed. We didn't get that box. Like, no, that box went to the family. It was like, no, no, fam- family gets this box. This is Steve signed. And uh, they were able to open the, open the book up and go, that, that was grandma. That, that, was, that, was, that was grandpa. And so they could tell. They could tell. They could tell. And, and I thought, 
you know what I mean? Jason's like, you're not going to say it. I'm like, do work for an open book, man. Like, this is it. And, you know, it, you feel like that American pickers, you know what I mean? Like when that's you, what, when you told me the story, that's what it reminded me American pickers or, or the story. What is that other one? I, Antiques roadshow, man. Yeah. I don't yeah. watch the TV, but I've seen the clips of the storage thing or whatever, where they buy those storage storage rooms and so so there's hound it. guys right now that are like i got a 600 dollars book signed by steve I'm and one of them. The, <laughs> show up the antique road show and it's gonna be like nope that was signed by his wife there he, he was out hunting when that book got signed yeah price just went down <laughs> which which i can i mean as a hound if you really think about it in the day like if if brett if you could be out on the mountain and and that's how you made money was you know selling books because Obviously, those those government hunters didn't get paid a ton. I mean, it, you no, know, they, they don't. You have to do something to to pay the bills. You know, you pay the dog food bills. You know, essentially, mm-hmm. you you don't. They don't cover enough to pay for your dog feed, probably for the, a lot of the times. You know, as far as fuel. Yeah. And that. Well, isn't there a story about dog food and having to go find it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that too. I forgot about that. I was I was talking to Ed. I'll we'll get into that. I. But anyways, back to this signature. You know. Steve Math is up on the mountain hunting because he'd just go for you know long periods of time and and he they get this book and it's like here you go <laughs> you know what I mean <laughs> well mama mama Mathis is back there signing a book and getting out and <laughs> it worked I'm not I'm not uh, sorry I'm, there's no more signed books so we're just gonna call it as it is but you may or may not have a legitimately signed book from Steve but if you don't the the, the the good news is if you don't, you got one signed by his, his, his yeah. lovely wife. The publisher. The public the publisher. Yeah, that's, that's a better way to say it. You got one signed by the publisher. Yeah, it sounds better when you say it that way. The one that came that I borrowed from Mike Root was signed. Yeah. You know, I but I'm not gonna tell Mike that it might not have been <laughs> <laughs> You think he's gonna listen to this one and be like, oh, I don't know. Oh I thought that was just like it's just history. It's just interesting. You know what I mean? Like it, it's what happened. You know what I mean? Like we can't, Yeah. We, we, I, I, we, I'm sure we wish we'd go back and change it, but you can't. So you're on the antique road show and you, you show up with that book signed. There is a chance it was signed by the publisher and not the author. Just wanted to. Um, so I thought that was kind of cool. Sometimes that works in your advantage though. I know I picked up because so at the time I bought two books, I bought brave mm-hmm. a signed copy for stupid money stupid money how much it was it was over four hundred dollars i know that and this was oh shoot probably six seven years ago give or take yeah and they had a copy of the greatest guide for the the life of the greatest guide and i'm like oh i want that and they said well okay it's autographed by the author well dale lee didn't write it so i'm like okay whatever i'll just take it and it was autographed from dale lee to Neil Carmony, the editor of the Ben Lilly book, on Christmas Eve. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's unique right there. Right? So I'm like, for the first time, it wasn't signed by an author, and I just hit the jackpot. <laughs> <laughs> and it's sitting up there next to Brave, you know? Go find those books, Jason. <laughs> yeah, now your mission, your mission is to go find a, a storage container full of those books. Man, yeah. I wish. Yeah, I was gonna. I, I wanted to. This, of course, this fascinates me. I don't know how much it fascinates other people, but this is the pedigree of Brave from the book, and he goes back to a, a dog named Red Two, and then Frisco One and Queen, Buck, Bell One, and Lou. But what I think is so fascinating is like under, like Frisco was out of Red Two, it says Sir Carl Hart or Hurt with the most famous of the Southern California lion hunters, partly due to a book written by Martha P. McMillan. He was truly a great hunter and fine man. And then if you go down, said the dog, let's see, like, oh, here's Spot. And Spot came from Ben Lilly. And Spot, the dog Lou was believed and nothing to indicate she didn't come from the most famous of all lion hunters, Ben Lilly. And then wow. if you go down further, under the dogs, they have notes about where they came from and then yeah. and what they did. And like John Wills, non-professional hunter, caught more bobcats in the dry desert country of Southern California than any hunter theirs, any hunter hunters there. I believe the dog Jeff contributed more to the Mathis hounds than all others. 
that's wow. just, to me that's just cool that's i mean i just cool. i can go through all that stuff and, and not just the net you know because you get to the 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 show dogs and all this stuff and you know and the akc registries and everything and they just have the dog's name and the kennel name or whatever it is but he goes through here and he and he talks about the guys who hunted the dogs and then and then where did you get that from you know i uh which 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 hole did you have to dig? He dug a hole in the South Forty. It's, 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 it's top secret. I can't tell anybody. For, <laughs> but no, no, no name uh, mountain. <laughs> yeah, no. I I I took a, a or a guy came down and hunted with me uh, from Texas, and uh, he's kind of he gets around. He talks to a lot of people and everything, and and uh, Muldoon Muldoon Mul something we'll do. He, he lived here in New Mexico at one time and he had a bunch of Mathis hounds at one time. This is years ago. He passed away. And then this guy that, that went with me, he had a copy of all these. He said, he said, I'll send them to you. He said, if you want them. And I said, yeah, I want them. Yeah. And uh, I, I post them all on Facebook, you know, just, and, and when I get, if I ever get around to finishing up this website, then I'll have it all posted on there. Awesome. Yeah. But yeah. It's, it's, it's just, it's fascinating. I've never, I've never hunted a math of sound or been around any of them or anything like that, but I know that I, I think that Coles, Coles cat hounds or something. I think they had some math of sounds back in, back in the day. Years ago. Yeah, I think so. He's on, he's on fa- Facebook. Mm-hmm. Well, if I can, if we can get this, this other podcast done, that, um, that one of the guys, th- there are a few out there that are still getting hunted. Yeah. Are there? Yeah. The yeah. bloodline yeah, is still, there's there's some safes, you know, with some pedigrees in them. That's why I was curious about yours, you know, where it came from. But yeah, it's it's interesting. It's it's definitely a, it is like it like I said it it, it's like that American Pickers game. Like this is what we're doing. We're digging around and you just find this little <laughs> bit here. And and I did not fully um, appreciate on my drive over there because honestly it was, you know, it was. I literally left Buddy with a how many hour drive and all the yeah. heavy lifting. And I, I go talk to my wife and I'm like, uh, I need to go do this. And so we're going to go try and go camping, right? And so I'm like, oh, I got to do it now so I can be back Thursday to get the trailer hooked up and just, just a checklist of things to do, right? To get to get on the road so I can go camping. And and uh, so I I left. Yes, I was on the road yesterday. So it was, it was Tuesday night. I was like, oh, I had dinner with the family and seven o'clock I hit the road and and drove until I I couldn't drive anymore and grabbed a hotel so I could get, you know, close enough to at least have the drive cut in half. I mean, striking distance. Yeah. And so, and it was just, it was just checklist of things, you know, I I was just like, Oh, checklist here, drive over here, pick this, you know, and and then whenever, you know, when I walked past that skull box, like once it was like, slow down. And then I walked back to the skull box, you know, like slow second time, slow down. You know what I mean? Like I need to slow down. Is that, I mean, is it just when you went there and you, and you seen all that, it kind of dawned on you? I mean, it, it, the skull, the skull is what really, you know, and then she, they were going through, they had some pictures. So they laid some pictures out showing pictures of their grandpa, you know, with the dogs. And so it became not just Steve Mathis, a lion hunter. You, it was the family and then the, yep. the, the heritage there and everything. Yeah. And, and like I said, they, you know, she, we, uh, she, she wanted, she was, Holly was really like, okay, we should get, we should get dad in here, you know, and, and they were just really wanting to make sure they preface it, you know, like he's going through some, some health issues and, and she's like, he's really smart, you know, like you just tell they, they, they had a, they were, they There's were kind of afraid, you know what I mean? You're opening sure. up the curtains to, to family stuff. And, yeah. And so, I mean, boy, I was scared. I was like, man, cause they're like, he may, he may not remember anything, you know, he, we, we, he knows this is happening. He knows, you know, what you're doing, but he's, he was, he was concerned that somebody was going to take advantage of his family is, is what, Oh yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? So yeah. um, she, they're like, you know, everything's up and up. We're not doing anything bad, but he may come in and not remember what we talked about. And, and so Ed came in and, and was in, in the, the storage room and I was at my, my, my truck and I came in and I'm like, okay. I mean, I was like, put my game face on, you know what I mean? I don't know what I'm walking into. And uh, reached out, shook his hand, you know, and was like, Hey, I'm, you know, I'm buddy. And, started talking about dog and it wow. was insane it was like he was talking about going and so like i would i, I had it you can tell buddy's excited i love it <laughs> well i'm just trying to tell the story like there's so many things in my head that i'm trying to you know so that dementia i just want to say something really quick before i before i talk about it but i think 
and I was telling one of my buddies or my wife, I said, I don't know a lot about it, but I think it affects short-term memory in some people, if that makes sense, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and not the long-term memory. And I, yeah. I am not a doctor. I am not diagnosing anybody. I'm just reporting what I, what happened, what I seen. And yeah. that man was sharp. He was, he knew his stuff from the day, like Mexico, you know, going hunting as a kid in Mexico and hunting jaguars. And he remembered, you know, he said, yeah, dad would send us out for, for dog food. So they'd go find chickens or grouse or whatever animals for dog food. Cause they don't, you don't pack dog food back in those days. And so he was saying, you know, they'd, they'd have to go find dog food, you know, go find animals that they could feed to the dogs. And, uh, you know, how, how he got the job in California, his, his mom, you know, was at work. She worked for the government. And so she seen this posting that they put up. And so she, I won't say printed out cause I don't think it was printers, but you know, <laughs> it brought a, brought a paper home. And, uh, he, and Steve was like, well, where's my, you know, read it. And it was like, basically, do you want to be a, you want to hunt dogs for a living? He's like, where's my application? She's like right here. And so she wow. they had the application filled out and he had to, you know, it was like 40 people put in for it and he, he beat out 40 or 50 people for that job. Um, so he was, he was very with it. He, he definitely. Yeah. And so I think and the only part, the only thing that if I would have, if I hadn't known, I may not even noticed. I mean, it was, it was so minute, no, but we, I was strapping down a few of those, those boxes, you know, to make sure that everything was, was secure on my, on my truck. And he said, man, this is a really nice truck. And I was like, oh, thank you. You know, and I was talking about the flatbed, you know, and, and, and he said, he said it again, same exact line, man, this is a really nice truck. And in my head, I was thinking, I want to talk to this guy about dogs again. Like that's what, yeah, that's what my that's thought what was. kept him. Exactly. Like when, when I had to focus on something else, he, he, he was, he got, he got lost and that's best yeah. I can describe it. And it was nothing malicious. He didn't do anything. And I got done and we went back to dogs and he was back with it. And he could, again. yeah. And I was like, man, I could sit here for, I, could, I, I honestly wanted oh, yeah. to, you to go. Have been recording. I needed to get home, but oh, um, yeah. I, I want to see if if they wouldn't try to do a podcast. Honestly, I, and and just to preface this, if it's not good, and let them listen to it first. If it's any sure. iota up to par, we won't do it. But I don't think I think if we talked about those days back in there, I think that man would know it and it would be sharp. And I just have a suspicion. Again, I'm not a doctor, but I think the short-term minutia of a pickup truck, you know what I mean? Like the, the 10 minutes or whatever it yeah, is. No, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Yeah. You know, I, th- that's not where, where he, you know, his mind had a problem with that. But man, he, he didn't, you get back a couple of years. I don't think, I honestly don't think he'd have any problem because he, he knew it. I mean, he was, it was like you were just talking to a, a, a guy. And so I think he really, I would hope he enjoyed it because I enjoyed the conversation. And so I don't know. Like that's one of the things I, I kind of, in my head, I'm like, man, I wonder if, if they would do that, if he'd sit down and, and try a, a podcast talking about his dad back in the day. That'd be cool. Yeah, that would be something. You know, that would um, be something. It would be cool. So, so who knows? Maybe something will come out of it, but it was, yeah. it was definitely an interesting. I bet it was. Like, Jason said, um, he's like, you're not going to talk about the signatures. I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's what it is. It's what happened. Somebody's got to keep him in check or at least try to. You somehow. may not want to know the answer, but you know what? I bet I, I, I bet people who have those signed books are not just going to go throw them away. No, no. <laughs> we'll dispose uh, of them. <laughs> I mean, if you all want to get rid of them, we'll probably Send them to dispose me. Send of them. them. I'll, I'll take them. We know the story. Uh, <laughs> So, so yeah. Brett, what's going yes. on? Is it, I think that about covers that. Like I, the, the, the brave book, there'll be more. The, the brave books are available. We didn't really oh. cover this cause we've done, we didn't even sell it. Didn't yeah, we? we sold we, it yet. We, we've done a couple of recordings already. So these are available. And when we say they're brand new, they are legitimately brand new in the shrink wrap. Well, I shouldn't say that. They're in blocks of what five? I don't even know if they invented shrink wrap back when these were done. It's like what, what is it? It's like it's like a plastic. I mean, it's probably shrink wrap. But sur- saran wrap. Saran yeah. wrap. It's kind of a a plastic. I don't know. But right. Yeah. But we will have these. Well, by the time this podcast posts, they'll be available on our website. They might be sold out. They might be sold out. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. They, um, they absolutely could be sold out. 
one hundred percent. We don't know. Um, wow. we, don't know. that's just it. You don't know how fast they're going to sell out, but we did want to run them on a sales price right now. Well, buddy, what's regular price on these things? What We're going to list them on our website for five hundred and seventy-seven dollars on sale. <laughs> <laughs> I got to say the on sale really quick, or else or else Holly's yeah. going to call me. And, on and sale, like, we're not. You said you weren't going to sell them for six hundred dollars. <laughs> no. Oh. We're, legitimately though guys because we really want to get these in the hands of everybody who's been after this book Mm -hmm. for limited time and limited supply 50 bucks right buddy yes that's what we're gonna we're we're doing this this round is 50 dollars, and and so the key is limited supply very yeah exactly so if you want one do not wait i mean i i i hate being pushy salesman type person but they these are this is a gold mine valuable yeah Yeah. and they're they're sought after and and you you can't call us you know afterwards and be like once they're gone it's like we're we're not gonna be able to make any more up you know what i mean like i don't i do not know if there's publishing rights or whatever you know what i mean like who knows what what this relationship will open up i don't know who has publishing rights i don't know maybe maybe there could be but i i don't as of right now there is no republishing there will not be a book that there would dang sure not be a first edition book and right and in that mm. well and anybody's lucky to see five for sale at one time anywhere on the internet let alone yeah but he's got a stack of primo the, the world production of brave books okay no um anybody by, by the time this podcast is released anybody who if you're hearing about this for the first time you may be behind the eight ball. You know what I mean? Like we, we should, we should, we should create a code, Jason. Code. It's like, Hey, this is the podcast code, you know, podcast it's like secret word podcast. Like you don't have Facebook, you don't have Instagram and yeah, right. You only have an iPhone that you listen to podcasts on the, the, the chances of that happening are unlikely. But, but anyways, I think if, if you're hearing it for the first time on the podcast, don't delay, go, go figure out yeah. on our website, get one checked out, give us a call because we want to make sure that the people who are engaged and who want one get one. And we're going to try to protect them to make sure they go out to, to the right people. So. Yeah. By the, by the time this podcast comes out, I mean, like today, let's, let me get my timing right today. I posted on my community page on my YouTube channel yep. that these books were going to be available that you, they could probably order them this coming Monday. So today is Thursday. So this coming, yeah, no, they'll be, they'll be, they'll be able to order them. In 15 minutes, Brett. Okay. I'm on the okay. website in 15 minutes. Okay. So um, if I can get a link for them or something. Yep. I can send For my members. Because I, I got, I got, you know, I got a, quite a few guys that are members of my channel, which is where they join and they, you know, they contribute, you know, a couple bucks a month or five bucks a month, whatever it is. And uh, I posted it on there so they could have, you know, might have a little bit of advantage of getting in there first and, making sure they get in a book, you know. And that's kind of the thought process for me and Jason was, we, number one, we we told Holly that we weren't going to sell these for 500 bucks. I mean, we yeah. just, we were like, no. And and number two, even though they're listed on Amazon, that doesn't mean that, you know, I could, I could I put could. six on Amazon now and those, those <laughs> haven't sold. So at some point, you know, I do know, you know, people pay $400. I know I could, we could sell them easily at $400 and they'd start going. My daddy always said asking and getting this to you. Yeah, exactly so at some point there's a real number there so 577 is probably the point where they're not flying off the shelves but um you know several hundred dollars so we we were just like you know we're not gonna sell these for four or five hundred dollars we just you know we assured and, and prior to your find the rarity of the book is what made it so valuable also yeah. but now yeah. that there's going to be more out there that that, that they won't I, be as valuable I have a feeling they'll still be more than $50. Yeah, yeah. no, that's a bargain price. That's a bargain <laughs> price for sure. Well, and that so, was the point of the social media side is, you know, everybody who commented, you know, we leaked this very slowly because, A, I mean, we, I don't know. I mean, it'd be cool to sell them all, but we didn't want them to all go right away to like one person. Yeah. You know, or Oh, general. somebody. But we yeah. didn't want to put a limit on it either, because if somebody wants to go and buy one for, you know, a Christmas present or this yeah. or that, like, we're not going to tell you how many you can buy, but we will tell you that we will fill the orders that were placed by, you know, loyal People. followers. We're going to really customers. make sure that they, they go to, you know, 
to see now if I was a real smart YouTuber, like some of these guys are, yeah, <laughs> I would buy a couple extra from you and then have the, some kind of big promotional drawing for them or something, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But Cause yeah. I'm not a real smart YouTuber. You're not smart. Maybe we'll give you one to do that. Maybe, maybe, maybe we'll, gotta, we'll help you out. You know, there's a bunch of laws and regulations and stuff that that they kind of regulate that thing. You know, where, yeah. where they have those. I, I, so that kind of so, pisses me off. That was a cool little experience for me. I bet. And I'm I hope jealous. That yeah, I like I said, I Jason was supposed to go hunting, and he was like, "Oh, I could, I could go over there," and I was like, "Oh, I'll just run over there and." and because I'm, I'm, I was a little closer, and so I, I, I drove it. But um, yeah, Jason. Next time, I'll make sure you get a, you get a go. It was a little, little more. To, Brett, we'll, we'll have to get you over here too. That that'll be one. Yeah. Maybe. If we can do what it, if, if we do it, let's all go over there and, and do a podcast yeah. in in person and talk about. But we got to make the deal first. We got to somebody's got to schmooze up Holly and and see if they'll they'll be up for that. I don't know. So Brett, let's hear about what's going on with with you. Um, we got a little more time. I said it's just kind of a different podcast since we're more on a current events kind of podcast. We're not talking yeah. about the dogs; we're talking about stories. So this is a really good time to talk about what. I mean, you just got back from a trip. Yeah, I, I you know, I, Jim Farmer's gone with me to when I went and talked to Clay Henderson. You know, Jim. Jim's the one who set that up. You know, he knew Clay and set do you that pass up. a hardware store there, Brett? Why, what, what's wrong? What did I do? WD 40? Yeah, you want to pick up some oil next time when you drive past the <laughs> Sorry. WD 40 for that chair? <laughs> no, I'm just. Uh, no, no, no. You're, I need to do something. It becomes a habit. I sit there and I rock back and forth. and You make the sound. It makes Sorry. you feel comfortable. Yeah, I know. I know. Let me know. Where was yeah, I? You got me off. <laughs> I lost you. Oh, so Jim. Yeah. So, so Jim, he went with me to to talk to to clay they're good friends and everything known each other for years and then jim went with me to talk to my crew mm-hmm. and uh, and me and jim we, we've known each other for a few years now and i bet we talk two or three times a week and uh all bounce theories off of each other on dogs and you know how you are with your buddies that you hunt yep. with and everything yep. talk dogs and lions and locations and scent and just all the things that you know houndsmen will talk about went up there and i sat down and set some mics in front of us and we talked for shoot we talked for a long time and i recorded it all so that'll be a did you have your new setup up. did you have your new one new mics no i had the mics that i bought prior to what you had suggested for me and okay. uh but i just got them in just a little while ago can't yeah, wait cool. to try the audio technica man when i listened to the podcast y'all did with clay i mean that that sold me right there. I said, man, it was good. The one is- thing I listened to, to ours, um, which came out, was it yesterday, Jason? Yeah. So yeah. a week, a week, the, the one, the podcast before the one you're listening to now. And the one thing I can say is I think we need to turn our mic gain down just a little bit because I could hear a little bit of the echo coming in on the other one. So just be cautious of that when you're sitting close together. So, okay. Oh, you could. Okay. Yeah. It'll yeah. overbleed sometimes, you know, when you're yeah. real close, like we were sitting on two tailgates for the, the episode with bear hunter magazine. So it was buddy and, and clay sitting on one and we were all facing and the, each and other. The redheaded but, child around the other. Yeah. The, the two of what do you call us? The, I don't know. <laughs> red-headed, Sherpas, stepchild. red-headed stepchildren. We're sitting on the other truck. Oh, so. yep. We were playing, we were, we were picking on them, uh, clay and, uh, Colby and Jason are both redheaded. Red, yeah, red. There ain't nothing wrong with redheads. That's what I said. <laughs> Don't give a redhead your brand new truck to drive. That thing was sweet. That little Ranger, man. Uh, I didn't realize it was turbocharged. Yeah, a little four cylinder. <laughs> Gets with it. <laughs> it does. So, hey. so anyways, we're we're gonna go see your audio is gonna get much better. I think. Yes, I think it'll. It, yeah, uh, I hope so. I mean, that uh, if using those headsets and those mics. The biggest problem is, you know, I'm going to have to hand those over to some of those old men and say, here, put this on your head and see, make sure that they'll do it. You know, I, I wonder, and this is something I told, I told, I know I talked to you on the thing. I was like, man, I don't, I don't know if that setup won't intimidate people. Cause you got a big headset on, you got a mic in front of you. You look like you're on the ESPN, you know, mm-hmm. news or not news, the sports channel, you know, where you're broadcasting football or whatever. That's the setup that we have now. The audio is really good, but I wonder if it's going to intimidate some of those old guys 
or, or I change don't know. ambience. Well, you know, and I have some wireless uh, lapel mics, mm-hmm. but you have they pick up everything. Of, not as bad as what I've used before, but they're still you got to wire those guys up, you know, and that's kind of a pain. And this last yeah. time I have some condenser mics, some you know, they're fairly expensive condenser mics, and I put them on the table with me and Jim. But still, I mean, like me, like me rocking in my chair, you know, you kick back and, and the sound goes away. And, and Jim, you know, and I'm telling Jim, try to keep that mic, you know, about a fist away from your face there. And, and, uh, and yeah, yeah, and then he just, he'll, you know, he'd get close, but then he gets to tell the story and he would, he would rock backwards. And, and I finally, thought, you know, I, I, it is what it is. We'll, we'll get the best we can and, and hopefully it comes out. And good. I wonder, Brett, I mean, we don't know. And I think better audio is what to lean on. But I wonder if that changes the ambiance. Because when you listen to one of your podcasts, you can tell you're sitting around munching on something. What the heck were you munching on last time? I loved Mike Roots. Like, I Ray, literally, Ray, what was he munching on? Man, and I could tell. And I'm like, either he's got a, a either either Mike Root has a, um, what do you call it? A, a tick? You know what I mean? Where he, <laughs> no, he just, or he's body. doing something that sounds good. I don't know what it is, but what oh, was you he hear a coffee cup right? every once in a while? I'm like, man, they're like literally just having coffee. That's pretty sweet. Uh, the podcast sounded like it was, it was recorded a hundred years too late, huh? <laughs> <It> was, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. It was awesome. What what was the mic? I m- bought Mike some donuts, uh, you know, and I, I took him up there, man, <laughs> he just, he dove into those donuts and, and, and just peanut butter, out, right? But, well, peanut butter is his <laughs> go-to. Peanut spoon. butter and a spoon, you know. That's yeah. that's the, that guy's tough as they come, you know. But he loved those donuts, yeah, you know, and 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 so I, and then you know I got these little my 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 little merch that I that I sell my cups, my born one hundred years too late cup, these water bottles and coffee cups and stuff. So when I go to do, I give those guys a set of them with everything, oh, and, and cool. they all they all like that. My little stickers. That's cool. So that's, that's, that's pretty cool. I know. No, you know, they're I, taking I, a time out of their day, you know, to, to sit down and, and talk to me and I just enjoy it. You know, I, I get to hear their stories and then ask questions that I've been wanting to ask them for a long time anyway. So. Well, the oh, question man, that, everybody's got, it was good. That guy was on, I mean, like I said, Mike Rue, I, that was the one thing I was like, I gotta ask Brett what he's eating. Cause it tastes good. I don't <laughs> bring me some next time. Get my, you know, my I had a guy. I had a had a guy comment on on the video. Said, "Man, it's probably not a very good idea to be recording these guys and having them eat at the same time." And yeah, he I probably said, likes yeah. cats. Come on, just... <laughs> but it's episodes okay. like that and it, like all these cool warriors of Elgato. I mean, shoot, between everything going on around here, like it's cool to see, and it just really made me look from that that 30,000 foot view with these brave books. It's like, I don't know how to say it. It like rekindled everything. Like, Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. We're on a mission to get this stuff out. And, you know, you brought us a lot of great content as far as the videos and the podcast, but it's like, man, like these little bits and pieces are happening right now. Brett is on the road recording these. We find these books. I mean, we're approaching an age where this is not going to happen if we don't do it now. I mean, how do you feel about yeah. that, right? No, exactly. I mean, it's uh, like I told everybody, it's just a matter of time and all those stories are going to be gone. And that, that history is going to be gone. And, 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 uh, you know, with all the famous guys that we have, you know, Dale, the Dale Lees, the Ben Lillies, the, the Steve Mathis and, and, and these guys, there's a bunch of these other guys that just didn't have the, the notoriety. There was no, uh, no uh, publicity for them. You know, they, they were out there just hunting and, and they have good stories too. And a lot of them are unbelievable. You know, what we talked about, or just to, to uh, explain the reach that we actually have is I have, we were talking about Pat Wanlin and, yeah, and I yeah. was always supposed to go and I, I got voicemails from Pat. We were supposed to get together and I was going to record him. And this was prior to talking to you guys, you know, about the podcast menu. But I wanted to, I talked to him on the phone. The guy had a wealth of knowledge of the hounds and everything. Of course, he had that accident and he passed away. Well, just the other day, I'm sitting here and I get a a text message or an email or something on the computer. And the guy says, uh, I was just listening to your podcast. And I heard that that Mr. Wantland had passed away. 
And, and he said, I called Linda, he said, and talked to her and everything. He said, you're not going to believe this. He said, but two weeks prior to him passing away, I went up there and visited with him, spent a, a half a day with him. And I got out my iPad. Now, I don't know what the quality is like, the audio or the video. But he said, I got my iPad out and asked him if I could record him. He said, and I recorded him for two hours, him talking about the dogs and, and his stories and, and everything like that. And he's, matter of fact, I, I, I sent him the link to that Google Drive and I'm going to have him upload that stuff. That's going to be cool. The way yeah. you get that, like I, that, that's, things that, like that are just so, it, it's, it, it's, man, it's mind blowing. I, we are, I am having, I shouldn't say we, I, I, I can assume <laughs> we all are having a, awesome time with this podcast it is it has oh, been it's oh, it's been a good one and uh but it's been deep there's been a level of at least from our end of excitement that we're pulling there's no other format that i can think of that gets to do what we're doing right now and that's i've not been a podcast guy but i can i can tell we got this it's easy and, and we have such a good huge resource of people and the one thing i do wonder is if we don't get stale, you know what I mean? If we, we talk to, I don't think so, but, but I want to be caught. And that's why I'm, I was kind of really excited for this podcast. Cause it's just a little different. It's a story. It's, you know, I want to make sure that it's not the same and maybe it should be. And, and that, if that's what it is, I'm fine with that. Cause I can talk dogs all day long and, and you yeah. know, I have the next guy about dogs and there's always some little differences, but if, if people don't want just every person dogs, you know, Q and a, yeah, we, we want to make sure it's different. Every every guest, the common theme is dogs, and that's just what's going to be for us. I mean, it's just what yeah. our lives are. But um, I do kind of think sometimes it's like, man, if people – I just hope that if we get stale and people are like, yeah, I'm kind of getting over that, they let sound, us know. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I don't even know if I should say this yet, but I talked to my wife. She's really into nutrition with, with people, you know, she works out a lot. And so she's studying this, this nutrition. I asked her, I said, would you be interested in studying the dog nutrition so that you could kind of relate? There's a difference, you know what I mean? Between humans and mm -hmm. dogs and, but, but just questions. I was like, man, that would be such an interesting podcast, you know, cause I know uh, nutrition is a big one. Yeah. Um, I don't fully understand it. So um, my mind's spinning like that would be a really interesting topic, you know, for, for her to get a vet or whatever. And so she knows some questions about, that would be great. Yeah. You know, sports nutrition, you know, mushers, you know, we got guides, we got, you know, we, we haven't got into the coyote guys. We haven't got into beagles. We got to get, I think Bud Denny said he's going to join us. And so I had a guy in the shop today that I, 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 uh, I haven't told Jason this yet, but no, he's like eight new. times world champion trainer for, uh, like, like a police dog type of dog. Really wow. interesting guy. Hmm. I mean, He's got stories that he can't tell. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, you tell that story. He's like, no, I'm not telling that story. You know, I'm going to get every story I can out. But he, we were joking, uh, you know, because we, we were – some of the stories he's just told us in the shop just comes in, picks up stuff, and he's just a really interesting guy. Um, so I was like, man, would you do a podcast with us? And he's like, sure. And so, Oh, that'd be so awesome. Cool. It's like – Yeah, I mean, of course, I kind of focus on the old timers, you know, that – and it because that's always those guys have always fascinated with me because of the way they had to hunt or the way I think as much as anything is that the, the ones that actually devoted their lives to it, you know, that's right. what they were going to do. They were going to hunt their hounds and, and, and do that. And so that kind of fascinated me. But there's all you know, there's the bear hunters, there's the lion hunters, there's you. Uh, I've got probably four or five guys that have been that they've suggested for me to go interview down in South Texas. These bobcat hunters and, yep. and those guys yep. live in a world all their own. You know, they're oh, they're man. a completely different breed right down there. And uh, I, I want to go down there and talk to them. I'd like to listen to them. Of course, then you have the, you know, the the running dog versus the tree dog, and, oh, and that's all oh, yeah. interesting. You know, there's a lot of stuff that you can cover, and and sometimes it takes longer than just an hour. We've got such a great opportunity, and so far the feedback has been overwhelmingly in support, and and I don't ever want to get to the point where we don't listen to feedback because that's oh. you know what i mean like it, it's different for me and you and jason to listen to someone you know personally you know what i mean like i i can i i, I try not to i try to step outside of myself enough to know that 
when I inter- yeah. Clay Newcomb. Anybody that knows Clay is going to be interested in that podcast. And so mm-hmm. the, the, the trick is, is to make a podcast when you don't know the guy that it's a still interesting podcast. You know what I mean? Like that, and that's, that's, See, we've got an unfair part. advantage on that even though. Cause like, look at, look at Paul. Like we've had a, a relationship with Paul Laney yep. over the years and he's a great customer and you know, we've chatted, but that's the first time we've ever sat down and really got to have a conversation with Paul. And it was like huge response. People loved it. Yeah. 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 But and, and you could just tell that there's people, People who knew Paul really mm-hmm. loved that podcast. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? But hopefully the goal is, is to, you're going to have podcasts that people like better and some people don't, but the goal is to get the people who don't know Paul to really enjoy that podcast too. And that's, that's all I'm saying from, from a viewer standpoint, give us a review, email us, let us know if we start falling off a little bit, just so we can, it's easier to make small changes than it is to wait for us to fall off the train, crash the caboose and, <laughs> you know, kill all the passengers and it'd be like, well, let's get back on the tracks and let's try this again. Yeah. yeah. Any, any suggestions? So, um, don't eat while you're doing a podcast. Don't get rid of the squeaky chair. Don't bring don't. <laughs> so I would just reword. Don't bring the guy donuts before your podcast. Bring, <laughs> let him sit in the, in the truck, warmed up and melt the, the chocolate off him. And then afterwards, give him some gooey donuts that are, <laughs> no. Well, I think no, it's I think it's been an awesome thing so far, and I'm I'm loving these podcasts, man. It's nice to get Brett on here with both of us again, because I mean, in the busy world of today, Brett, I know you have a ton going on, buddy. Is a very busy man. Do you even get a hunt anymore, Brett? I mean, you know, I, I went out. I, I yeah, I still take my dogs out. It's kind of the same old deal, you know. I don't get to go out to the. I haven't been able to go out to real good country. I've been yeah. just, I, you know. I can trail a line every now and then right around the house here. So I go out and out my back door and saddle up a mule. And man, I got this vision in my mind. I just, and I've done it before, but I haven't done it consistently. I want to, I want to take a pack mule and I want to just, as I said on my last video, I just want to get out there amongst them and, and, and pack and, you know, carry everything I need to, to stay. And I mean, besides talking to the old men and recording them, that's what I really enjoy. I mean, I like to get out there and do it the old fashioned way, ride a mule, and, you know, and, what and he's saying and, and do stuff like that. That's what he's saying, buddy, is I need to take a couple of days here pretty quick. And Brett yeah, and I just need to disappear like blazing saddle style into the sunset and just two red beards riding yes. off on the mule. <laughs> I want to have blast. I'll have to get Jason a cowboy hat. though. Yeah, <laughs> well, I got one. <laughs> All right. I'm a hippie and a cowboy, man. Yeah. <laughs> Just not when it comes time to do real cowboy stuff. Like, you know, I'll leave that to professionals. That's awesome. <laughs> no, I already invited him. I said, come down. We'll, 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 we'll report a, co- we'll record a podcast up on the side of the mountain. It's well, different. I'll tell you that. Like, honestly, recording that one out in the open, something as silly as that, like, it was totally different. And it, and it set the tone going forward. Like I've been looking forward to talking with you all day, Brett, you know, like, cause we're all excited about this. Oh yeah. And I feel like we're totally geeking out and this may be like nothing to somebody listening, but to yeah, us they right may now, be like, what the hell are they geeking out about? Yeah, right. <laughs> it's a book, but I mean, for the rest of us, it gets, it gets like, yeah. Yeah. man, yeah, it's all two books. No, like, oh, I think no. people will be excited. You know, it's, it's, that's a heck of a find. I mean, I can't, it's unbelievable. Like I said, now you just got to find life of the greatest guy. I'll, I'll start working on that one too. Yeah. Yeah. Jason, you got a, you got a mission in life. You, you have found. I'm a book hound, man. I'm a little sore from digging, digging, digging up all them books. That was a, that was a goal. You know, and we do have the, the, the CDs or whatever from the, and it's the exact from the life of the greatest guy. And I'm still hoping that one of these days you'd be able to release those as a podcast. Oh, that that's right. Awesome. We, that's going to be. Yeah. And yeah. I got one extra uh, CD that that's not part of that, that Dale recorded separately that a friend of mine sent to me. And uh, of course I don't have permission to share it, but it's, it's kind of the history of the Lee brothers and, and it's Dale talking, telling the history. So it's, it's a pretty unique deal. We'll work on that one. Like if you need help, let's send Jason on it. He's good. I will. Good at digging them up. Yep. All right, Brad. I can hear everybody clocking out here on my on our time card. We have put the books live. Are they? Perfect. They are. They're now on the website. But if uh, 
So you're listening on this podcast. That was this this was recorded on uh, Thursday after our Facebook live video. So you're so, already a week behind, so don't don't delay. What we want to do is tell people who are listening how to find these because we have no visual with them. Oh. So if you go to the website, which is what like, website is that? We we don't even know if we ever mentioned. We hardly ever mention our our. Business. I know this is this is our commercial <laughs> side of it. Let's, let's turn on the commercial here. Hold on. You get the little countdown on Facebook when you're watching a video, and it's like, and you see the countdown coming. You're like, crap, there's going to be an advertisement. <laughs> like, this is what's coming, man. We waited till the end. So, Wait. honey, what, what website would they visit? Oh, double uh, W hunting. No, not even dusupply.com. <laughs> I'm going to say it wrong. I mean, we suck at this commercialization. See, you're you're, we you're supposed to start it out just saying, this podcast is brought to you by DU Supply. You can yeah. find all our products at dusupply.com. I know, you, but holy cow, man! You, you, <laughs> somebody, you had another right job there. in a calling, man. <laughs> we're we're going to post that all over the place. <laughs> oh, that was good, man! I can't even talk like that. That was. Uh, that's right. Oh, Watching so too much TV in my youth. Yeah, I don't <laughs> I know what. To too much. I don't know what you channeled, but you channeled some like 1990s <laughs> TV stuff back when you had TV. Probably you don't even watch TV anymore. Oh. <laughs> but all right cool. yeah they should be on our website man if you don't know where our website is by now you probably should <laughs> there i go telling people and just leave yeah right don't don't be uh, doing that right. so everybody if you go to www.dusupply.com there's right in the center of the top of the page you'll see for the hunter and that's a section that we put together for just houndsmen and houndswomen out there and you'll see hound books just click where it says hound books and that's going to direct you to our whole library. We've got lots of other stuff in there to check out. So make sure to look at, you know, the Warner Glenn book we just brought on. Thanks to Brett. That was a good one. And uh, Terrell Shelley. And it is now listed in live for $49.99 for even other stories by Steve Mouth. Or you go to Amazon and get or you go to Amazon. One, it's been one click checkout for $577 and something since. Mm-hmm. Jeez. It'll be on the right hand side of your screen. We'll make this super easy for people, man. Second, second you, you row. Might, you right might have made column. it. You might have made an enemy right there with that guy who has that book up on Amazon. I know. I he's probably yeah, hopefully he's a customer. Somebody's gonna be like, dang it. All right. <laughs> I, I'm trying to sell his book. I told I I you have you can it's on the podcast. I told him to go to Amazon and buy his book. Okay. Yeah, like, got what like more four. can I do? What more can we do? He's got time before this launches anyway. He just might I should send him a that. bill for advertising right now. We should send him a bill for advertising his Amazon listing. Thank you. All right, Brett, have a good right. one. Guys, awesome thank you very podcast. much. podcast. And uh, we look forward to, uh, I guess, the next week will be one of your bonus episodes after this. We're going to we're gonna switch it up so this is a regular podcast. And next week, we'll, uh, which, which one's you going to, which one are you going to put? Is he really a bonus anymore? Is it Terrell Shelley? I, oh, that's, I yeah. think we got Terrell Shelley light up for the Warriors of Elgato. Right, right, right. But Jason just mentioned a point that I just did. We're going to stop calling it a bonus episode. You, you've, earned, you've earned the respect of, of not being like the bonus episode. Uh, uh, we, should, we should call it like the, the redheaded episode. <laughs> the redheaded stepchild episode. No, no, all seriousness. You're like a part of the team. You're a part of the podcasting team. And so we want to enjoy it. We're gonna stop using the word bonus because you're just gonna be the other host. You're gonna be, you're gonna have your week, and we're gonna just trade weeks and and uh, not. I don't. We want to get out of calling it a bonus episode because what we started with before the idea was we wanted extra content or whatever, and you fill the hole. And I can tell you, and I think I told you this last week, but you were you're doing more than fill the hole, and so you're Good. you're pulling. I appreciate it. You're pulling the the whatever you pull. Whatever. I like that. I like that. Yeah. You know, I had been looking, I'd been, you know, steady and trying to figure out a way to do a podcast. And that was when you called me. So it was, it was, and it, it was, was great timing. for both of us. Yeah. Perfect. Right? It was all time because you were already thinking about it and trying to make things happen. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And exactly. How did it work? Did I call you on that one too? I can't even remember. I just know y'all called me and asked me if I wanted to help. Yeah. That'd be me. Audit. What I'm learning real quick buddy, is, uh, you should keep me around. Uh, uh, I'm just, just saying we turned them on two minutes ago and we've sold 11 books in two minutes. Oh, geez. <laughs> it's gonna That's be awesome. A, be quick. They're going to go quick. Oh, yeah. Well, oh. well okay. we'll recap. 
hopefully we'll have part two to this and at some point in the future and get some real stories and yeah yeah somebody's gonna be we're gonna run out of a w and they're really gonna have to go to amazon go yeah right amazon. oh mm. Who knows, guy? All right, I had a good joke that Amazon. I want to close on that Amazon joke, but man, and then and then Jason brought up the. Sorry, you know that disappoints me. We, I th- I thought the Amazon close was going to be that was the joke, and it was going to be like ha 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 ha, and then we like kick the music on. And <laughs> we we can. Anybody start got a joke? Over. I mean, it was disappoint. Have to have to find a, 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 a an outro. An outro, yeah. An outro. I, I wonder if we could get Shannon just cut and and. and throw my amazon joke at the very end we could probably that. too much editing i don't know all right brett good. we're gonna have to close it there guys thank you all right hey, have a good one guys okay we'll see you are we back we're recording we're back because jason, this was pretty important <laughs> jason wants to bring this up no yeah. no buddy wanted to bring this up and he told me not to let him forget and i epically failed him oh well he was oh that's right because you were like we should talk about that and you were like no we're not going to talk about that and of course that yeah like, again i'm ding, negative ding, ding. as soon as i as soon as jason says no we're not going to talk about this i'm like no that's funny let's talk about it <laughs> so so in the process of of uh acquiring these books we had to write a check and so one of their concerns <laughs> They, she actually asked Jason. Not their like, concerns. Not the, fa- no. the father's concerns. Oh, the father's concerns. Holly was good. Holly and yeah. I, we talked, gosh. I mean, so, we've been talking for three weeks. So we're, yeah, so we're that's right. So one of the, the, the father's concerns on the books was they were going to get scammed, right? Somebody's going to come take oh. some books and yeah. write a check, and then the check wouldn't go, right? And so, so Jason, because <laughs> he's like, oh, was, how, how is – buddy or double you and so jason of course you know he works for me so he put in a good word and was like oh buddy's good whatever you know he's in i was really nice and then and then you told her <laughs> she told me she's like yeah then she she said the first check buddy ever wrote jason bounced <laughs> and i'm like that's true i mean that it did happen <laughs> so that is very true so we, whenever i acquired whenever i so jason was trying to sell his hound business i don't know how much you know of this but Oh, Anyways, he, he was wanting to, you know, plum tree. He was trying to sell it. And so I was like, God, I really, honestly, I didn't want somebody else getting into his ship that he'd built. And, and so I was like, you it know, I wanted, Jason, I wanted Jason, <laughs> honestly, I wanted Jason to work with us. You know what I mean? I, mm-hmm. I, 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 I watched his character. I tried to squish him like a bug. I tried to drown him. I mean, so many things. I was waiting for that. <laughs> Yo, we're like competition. Yeah, huh? we, were competition. Yeah. we were hardcore. And I was like, he'd, well, that's he'd, a whole podcast. <laughs> he'd be treading water and he'd bob a couple of times. And I'm like, you know, he's going under, he's going under. And, and he popped back up. And come like, back yeah, up. He, he come back up. And so, so anyways, long story short, I'm like, that, that son of a bitch can, he's not going away. I mean, he's a, he's a, <laughs> when you get him in something and he's dedicated, he can work. Same old saying. What do they say? If you can't beat him, join him. Exactly. And so I was like, you know, I got to, I got to cut a check that I couldn't hardly afford, but to, to pay what he had built. And then, my, and I told Jason this in the beginning, I said, the only thing valuable in the whole thing for you is you. I mean, I want you out of it, but I had to take care of some things for him. Just looking at the business side, I was like, I got to, you know, pay some bills and, and, and make it worthwhile for him to jump. And neither one of us trusted each other. So, <laughs> so anyways, I, I cut him a check for an undisclosed amount. We're not going to talk about the amount, but. Anyway, that check bounced, Brett. <laughs> you know what oh, I mean? yeah. like, I bet bounced that. the check to, to a guy, and he's just thinking. I mean, the first thing that crossed my mind, and I don't want to curse, actually, even though I know we can get away with it, <laughs> it was something to the effect of you, bleepity bleep, <laughs> you, you're you playing the long game. You got the last me. little it took stab. You four years in a cease and desist order. Oh. And some packages that took me hours to un- unwrap. I mean, yeah. he got me. That would have been good. <laughs> Tried to kill him for four years, Brett, and I finally finally let him breathe, let him take a big old sigh of relief. I mean, that would have been just the last little KO. And then just, oh, oh, man. Just kidding. I, I never thought I was going to drive back up to Washington so fast in my life. <laughs> oh. But the truth was, <laughs> it was just, I mean, honestly, I was trying to juggle payroll, and, and I didn't have the – the the funds right I, I think i called him before he found it bounce you did. You know? i called him i'm like hey jason just so you know check's gonna bounce uh don't don't freak out <laughs> just wait right. a day or two and run it through again run yeah. it through again <laughs> let me know, you know like it's embarrassing i mean i don't want to call 
<laughs> well, and that's what Holly was so, you know, her dad was worried. Yeah. And she's like, Dad, these are this is a legit company. You know, they're they're real. And I said, Well, I tell Holly this story to make Buddy look good. I mean, honestly, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, know. here's yeah, the deal. That, <laughs> we did not like each enough, other. At, at one point in time, we did not like each other. But when someone shows you that kind of respect, you know, like, hey, you're the only thing worth some money here. You know, that meant a lot. I was kind of just running through how we built our relationship. Yeah. And I said, Andy bounced the first check on me, and I still work here four years later. <laughs> <laughs> she she said. They didn't have any doubts. No, no man. She, she, she said that did concern her a little bit. <laughs> like that. <laughs> She says, I'm not going to lie. That made me think. I, I stayed up for a minute that night thinking about, you know what I mean? Is, is it going to matter? That's what I said. I promise you. I I promise you. I I, you know, I said, I don't know that I can do it, but this, I'll make sure this check don't bounce. <laughs> <laughs> this one won't bounce. We oh, like man. you more than Jason. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Jason can take it. I've seen him go down. I've seen him bob a couple times. Right. He's Some okay. Fire. He's good for it. <laughs> I'm make sure. I was telling Jason, I was like, man, you know, when the, because I, I want a good team on my on my W, right? Sure. Right. I, we were talking about this on the way back. We were kind of laughing. I said, you know, I if you would have called me all pissed off about one bounce check, I'd probably have been like, this isn't the job for you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. You probably aren't. You you are not prepared, soldier. You're not yeah, prepared you're, for the fight. We're going to put you in. No, you're, you're not flexible enough. No. Oh. Anyways, oh, that's well. the, there's our closing. All there right. you go. <laughs> have a good one.